Example number two. Uh, we have a driver of a 1800 kilogram car traveling at 23 meters per second who slams on the brakes, locks the wheels on a dry pavement. And so the acceleration is backwards and there is our negative acceleration or deceleration and we have a coefficient of friction of 0.7 and we're asked to find how far the car will travel. So what is x? So we'll assume that x initial here is 0. Now you can solve this problem by the method that we used to use back in the earlier chapters involving kinematics and dynamics with acceleration. F equals ma and the force would be equal to the frictional force. But we want to solve it a different way using the work energy principle. So we're using the idea that the work done is equal to the change in energy of the system. And the energy in this system is really the change in kinetic energy. And the work done in slowing the car is the work done by the force of friction. The change in kinetic energy is the final kinetic energy, which is 1 half mv final squared minus the initial kinetic energy, which is 1 half mv initial squared. And the work done by friction is the force of friction multiplied by the displacement, delta r, multiplied by the cosine of the angle between the force of friction and the displacement. In this particular case, the force of friction is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force, and then multiplied by the displacement times cosine theta here on the left side. And this is equal to the same expression we have on the, on the right side. Since the surface is horizontal, then the normal force upwards is being balanced by the force of gravity downwards. So really, the normal force is equal to m times g. So we can now replace the normal force with mg times delta r times cosine theta equals the following expression over here. And one thing you might note here is that the mass is in every expression, which means that this is independent of the mass because if the mass cancels out. And also we know that the final velocity is zero, so this term is going to be zero. So we now now have the coefficient of kinetic friction times g times the displacement times the cosine of the angle between the force of friction and the displacement. Now the displacement is going forward, but the force of friction that's slowing it down is in the direction of the acceleration, which is backwards. So in this case, the angle is 180 degrees. So this is equal to negative 1 half v0 squared. And when you do cos of 180 degrees, you get negative 1. So this now becomes negative mu k g delta r equals negative 1 half v0 squared. So really, these two negatives cancel out. And so now our equation for our displacement is given by the following, delta r is equal to v0 squared, the initial speed squared, divided by 2 times the coefficient of kinetic friction times g. So let's go ahead and substitute it in there now. The initial speed was 23 meters per second. That quantity is being squared. Then multiply by 2, uh, divided by 2 times mu, which is 0.7, and g is 9.8 meters per second squared. And this gets, gives you an answer of a displacement of 38.5569, so we'll round that off to 38.6 meters. Okay, that's for part A. Now we're asking for how far would the car travel if it were going twice as fast? And this is why I derive this all symbolically, because we can now go to this expression here, where we have delta r is equal to the initial speed squared divided by 2 times mu k times g, which gave us an answer of 38.6 meters. Now, if the new velocity, v0, we'll call prime, is now uh, twice as fast as the original speed, we're going to have the following. Delta r prime will be v0 prime squared divided by 2 mu k times g. We're going to assume that it's the same coefficient of friction and acceleration due to gravity. And so what we'll see is if we replace v0 primed with 2 v0 
squared now, that quantity to be squared, we'll see that our new distance is going to be now four times our distance that we had earlier. So all we need to do is take four and multiply 38.6 by that, which will give us roughly 154 meters. And the last part is asking if the car lost kinetic energy, which it indeed did, and that was because work was done by friction, where did all that energy go? And the answer to that is it turned into other forms of energy. If you were to feel the pavement and the wheels, it'd be a little bit warm because some of that kinetic energy has been converted, or most of it has been converted into thermal energy. Some of it may go into other forms like sound energy. And, uh, but mainly it's heat. And this is it for example number two.